This video deals with descriptive statistics and it deals with it in three parts. The first part looks at ways of showing the shape of your data and representing it through visual patterns. The second part considers measures that summarize data in terms of their central tendencies. And the third part looks at measures of dispersion. An important caveat is that it seems little point these days to learn statistics by heart and the best way to learn how to analyze data is to actually do it using software packages such as SPSS. This session will provide just a brief overview that gives you a flavor of possibilities and uses of descriptive statistics. As I mentioned before, descriptive statistics provides summary information for your sample. There are two types of descriptive measures measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion. The measures of central tendency include mean, median and mode and the measures of dispersion include such indicators as range, variance and standard deviation. Before we go into detail I would like to briefly mention frequencies and graphical means of presenting your data. Presenting data graphically can help to communicate your findings and enhance the quality of your communications. I have included here several charts and graphs to show you the possibilities. Here is a pie chart, for example, that shows UK advertising market in 2010. Here is a bar chart that records absolute quantities, in this case advertising expenditure. And here is another bar chart that shows relative quantities, in this case the relative percentage. Please note that your marketing dissertations are serious and formal documents. Although graphs and charts can provide a really attractive summary information, please be aware that the format that may be acceptable and attractive to managers might seem overly ornate for the master dissertation examiners. I would advise you that you keep the graphics simple and that you develop a particular style and stick to it throughout your dissertation to make the piece easier to read and make it look coherent. Measures of central tendency provide summary information about what is typical of the sample. And there are three types of central tendency measures, mean, median and mode. Mean provides an average for the sample. Median is the value found in the very middle of the distribution and mode is the most frequently occurring value. The values can be easily gained from SPSS analysis and I have included here the results of such analysis copied directly from SPSS file which included 400 respondents and there were no missing values in my set. According to this analysis the average respondent was just over 45 years old the median is 44, meaning that if we arrange respondents in order from the youngest to the oldest at the 50th percentile halfway through the queue, you will get somebody who is 44 years old. The mode is 43, meaning that in all the respondents age groups, the group of 43 year olds was the largest. In addition to central tendency measures, we also report measures of dispersion which capture how much the values reported vary from each other. One dispersion measure is a range and that is the difference between the maximum value and the minimum value in your sample. Another typically reported measure is a standard deviation which captures the average distance from the mean. Here is another summary of descriptive statistics, this time showing the dispersion measures. As you can see, in my sample of 400 respondents, the youngest was 28 minimum and the oldest was 75 maximum. And on average, they varied by 9.5 years from the medium value. You will also see here that I ask SPSS to draw the histogram of the frequencies distribution. I will finish this video with the most critical consideration concerning data analysis. There is a strict relationship between the type of data you collect and the scale you use and the type of the analysis you may carry out on this data. Almost all types of analyses can be carried on interval and ratio data and very few analyses can be carried on nominal data. The best scales are interval or ratio scales. 
And if you use nominal or ordinal data, then you will be very much limited to the type of analysis you can carry out. Importantly, you cannot change the scale once your data is collected. That is, you cannot enrich a nominal or ordinal scale. Whenever possible, use interval and ratio scales. For example, imagine asking the respondent about their age. Your choices are to ask them what year they were born or present them with categories such as below 20, from 20 to 30 or 30 and above. If you do the former, ask for the birth year, you have a ratio scale. If you do the latter, use intervals, you have an ordinal scale. The scale is ordinal because the size of your intervals varies. That is, the distance between 0 to 20 is different from the distance between 21 to 30 and different yet from the distance from 30 and above. You can always turn a ratio scale into an interval scale, but you cannot do it the other way around. If you use ordinal scales, for example, you will not be able to calculate what an average age is in your sample. My advice is, whenever possible, use ratio or interval type scales, where the intervals are of equal size.